Hello and welcome to Bikini Design Club! Today we will be sewing our first underwire bikini top called Marilyn. But don't worry if you have never done anything like this before because this video will be very 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 slow and you will be able to learn everything you need to know on how to do this beautiful bikini top. We will start by explaining all the pattern pieces that we have on the table and also all the supplies you need to make this pattern because this is not like our normal patterns we need some actually different fabrics for this one so keep the video until the end so that you can really understand what supplies and what piece pattern pieces we have here so let's start these two are our lower cups from the foam pieces because this pattern will be sewn with a foam cup this is the upper cup of the foam so this is the seam allowance in black, I've marked in black so you can see. Uh, and we only have on the sides of the upper cup and the lower part of the upper cup. And this is because these areas that I'm um, touching here are going to be sewn together, but they are not overlapped. We will do, do this with a zigzag stitch without overlapping these seam allowances. So we will get to this a little bit later and you will see why we don't have seam allowances in certain areas of the foam cup. So for our main cups we have the upper cup pattern, the inner cup and the outer cup. And this is very similar to the pattern that I've just shown you for the foam, but it's the pattern to be used on your main fabric. pattern piece uh, has a huge difference from the other one and that's the seam allowances and this seam allowance here on the top uh, it will be sewn in a way that we will not see the seam it will be turned around to the other side so that's why the top seam here on the neckline is one centimeter and the rest is uh, 0.6 centimeters so that's why the seam allowances are different. If you decide to, to sew this on a, with a different uh, way of sewing, probably the seam allowances that we have used here are not the correct ones for your project. So keep uh, the same procedures that we do here because the pattern was designed to be sewn just like I'm showing you. Except if you are an expert and you already know, <laughs> so you can change the pattern pieces as you uh, go, but that's up to you. Uh, so we now have our pattern pieces here and I can explain you the other pieces of our pattern. Now let's talk about the bridge. The bridge is the center part of your uh, front and uh, you can use this with this folded line. Probably I don't know if in the pattern it will have a fold line or if I would uh, place it entire piece. But of course this has a fold in the middle and this is the center piece of our top. The bridge is a unique piece and you don't need to do any symmetric because it's only one piece as I told you. And then this piece will be combined uh, on each side with the cradle. The cradle piece of course you will need to cut symmetric. So I have on my right the cradle but you will need to do a symmetric piece. And then of course we have also on the table the wing. This, this is the back piece of our uh, bikini top. It's important for us to start calling the right names to the right pieces so that we all speak the same language. Uh, you have noticed that my voice is recorded over the video because I had some troubles with my audio. So this is... I'm sorry, but <laughs> it is what it is. Well, let me continue explaining the pieces. For the bridge, and the bridge is uh, a, a unique piece where uh, you will uh, then, of course, have your cups in, in here, where I'm showing you with my hands. Um, the bridge is the centerpiece and it's only one piece. You will only need to cut one main fabric and one stabilizer. I will show you ahead what's the stabilizer. Uh, but I can already tell you that uh, it's a fabric that doesn't stretch, so you are sure your cups will not spread everywhere. They will stay exactly where you want them to, 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 to stay. These different fabrics than the ones what we are used to use are the ones that are going to give you extra support. 
The cradle, for instance, you can decide if you want to use the same fabric, the stabilizer that I was talking, without any stretch, and that will give you more support. Or you can decide to use the power mesh that is something that gives you support, but it has horizontal stretch and small vertical stretch. And I will use a power net for my cradle and also for my wings, so my back parts and my outer, below the outer cup, so the cradle, okay, it's below the outer cup, I will have stretchy fabric there. But again, you can choose stretchy or stabilizer like in the bridge, you choose. Bigger cups, probably stabilizer is better, but it, it will be up to you. And since we are doing foam cups, we will not add any additional material other than the main fabric for our cup. So our cup will be cutted on our main fabric and it will also have a foam and that's it. For the wing, that it's also our back piece, we will do a fold on the edge and we will create a channel. Uh, so this is adjustable on the back. But if you want to do this with a clasp, you just need to extend a little bit the pattern and of course adjust to the high of your clasp and that's it. So it, it's also up to you, but on this one we will do adjustable with straps. On the wing I will be using my main fabric and also the power net. So again extra comfort and a lot of support. You can see that we have a curve on the bridge and on the cradle and we have a seam allowance that is bigger than all on the rest of the pattern and this is because we will apply elastic and then we will fold and do a cover stitch so we really need the seam allowance on the lower part to be uh, bigger than on the rest of uh, the pieces uh, and uh, we will combine the cradle and the bridge on this line here and I think uh, next time the new video that, that I'm also going to uh, make is the, this exact pattern but without the foam so that if you want to do it without the foam in the future I will for sure do a tutorial of the same pattern without the foam. Nevertheless that will uh, need some adjustments on the pattern. Now let's set our pieces uh, aside and let's talk about the fabrics. And we are going to start by talking about the foam. This is a very soft foam that you can buy uh, on a lot of stores and it's cut and sew foam. So it's not a pre-molded cup like we have inserted before on some of our patterns. It's actually a foam when, where you cut your pattern pieces and you create the shape of your cup. This uh, foam, you can buy it in so many colors but it's really different from these molded cups that I'm showing you because this time we will have a pattern for the foam so it will be completely adjusted to our pattern pieces of our bikini top. Uh, and I will have a link uh, of some stores where you can buy all the supplies on the pattern descriptions and also here on the tutorial. So don't worry about where to find all the supplies you need. It will not be that hard, I will try and help. Uh, the foam has a little bit of stretch horizontally and this is also important just like it is important when you cut all your pattern pieces. We always have a grain line and our grain line is vertical and we cut our pattern pieces with the greater stretch horizontally. So the grain line is opposite to the greater stretch of each fabric. In this case, I'm placing my foam with the horizontal stretch and my grain line perpendicular to that stretch. And that's how I will cut all my pattern pieces for the foam. As we've mentioned before, we will just need to cut uh, the three pieces and then the same pieces symmetrical. So we have to cut these three pieces twice. So now let's talk about our power net. I'm going to be using power net today and you can use power net uh, with some horizontal stretch and not so much vertical stretch. And the power net is more supportive for bigger um, cups uh, and the stretch net is a bit uh, uh, less thick and it has uh, stretch on both directions. It still gives you support but it's different from this one that I'm using on this project today. Uh, and we will be cutting uh, the wing 
of course, two pieces, uh, uh, the left and the right wing. And we also are going to cut the cradle with this net. You can choose if you want to cut the cradle with this net or with the next fabric that I'm going to show you that has absolutely no stretch, but it's up to you. For me, I think it's enough. If you need more support, you should go with the stabilizer that we are going to talk not next. If not, uh, do just like I'm doing here. It's uh, perfectly enough, the support it gives. So this is my stabilizer. It has no stretch neither horizontally uh, or vertically and it's called stabilizer and I'm going to be cutting my bridge, my centerpiece of my uh, pattern with uh, the stabilizer. This means I will have no stretch between the cups and they will be exactly where I want them. If you want, you can use it, this uh, stabilizer to cut the cradle, but I'm going to be using my power net for the cradle today. As my main fabric for my upper cups and my lower cups, of course I will have to cut this and also symmetric. I'm going to be using this floral yellow uh, swimsuit fabric, so it's lycra. This is recycled and I bought it at Padrão B. I'm going to tag down below in the description if you want to access uh, the store. It's a Facebook store and it's made in Portugal and it's quite good and I really like it. So I'm going to be cutting my upper cups and my uh, lower cups with um, this uh, floral yellow fabric. Uh, and that's it, just cut uh, the three pieces and then the same symmetric. For my other pieces, I will be using this fabric also from Padron B. I really like it with the small uh, white dots. And I'm going to be using it for the bridge, for the two cradles, uh, for the wings for the back and also for the straps and also for a binding that we will be doing on the sides of the, um, under the arm uh, of our pattern. You will see later on, but I will also use this dotted uh, fabric. Now there's something I also want to talk to you, but I'm not going to do it today, but I still want to talk to you, so it's an option for you. When you connect the wing to the cradle, you can uh, actually sew boning on that seam. In my case, I only have this metal bone on my hands, so I will not insert metal uh, on a swimsuit. Uh, I usually have bone that is uh, in plastic and you can sew to the pattern. But since I don't have it, I will not place it. But just so you know, if you feel like you want to, just grab your uh, sew boning, your boning, uh, and instead of doing the entire high of the pattern, don't forget that you have to leave room for your seam allowances on the top and also on the bottom. And this is something I, in this pattern, I don't think um, you need because the high is not that big but we will have a new pattern uh, with another shape that will have a higher side and probably there I will feel the need to uh, find some <laughs> how, somehow a way to buy the, um, this supply that is being so hard for me to buy that because every, every store is closed and online here doesn't work that well so it's been hard, uh, it's been hard for me but well if you have it and you want to apply boning on this seam you can do it uh, just don't forget do not use uh, metal because it will uh, be ruined with the salty water and now we also have another supply that i want to talk to you it's the wires we have different style wires and i will show you here uh, i'm gonna try and show you where the center of the wire is and uh, you have a color on the center of the, your, uh, this is mostly universal, all the brands have a color on one of the sides and that side is the bridge side, so it's the center of your chest and the other side is under the arm. So you, if you place, like I'm placing here, with horizontal and vertical lines, 
you will easily uh, find the center of your wire. So if I place both these wires on my table, you can clearly see they are the same size, but you can cl clearly see that they are completely different shapes. I will always mention on the patterns the shape that you need to buy for each pattern. In this case, for the pattern today, I bought short wires or demi cup wires, but unfortunately, I do not have my size. So these ones are a bit big and you will see that during the process of sewing, I will not be able to insert them on my pattern because they are too big for me. And then this other wire here, you can see it's the center is higher. It's the balconet um, wire and you have so many, you have the plunge, you have vertical wires, but for now I just wanted to show you the balconet and the short wire or demi cup wire so that you know when we talk about wires uh, that we have different styles. I will also make uh, place a link down below on the description and you can see the video from Liz where she speaks about uh, the styles of the wires and so if you need to know more about the styles just check uh, her video. Something interesting that I didn't knew before is that the wires are not universal and some brands uh, have different sizes for the same wire and then between sizes some brands scale them, grade them uh, one centimeter uh, the difference between sizes others 12 millimeters, others 15, others... So uh, in my case, my patterns are, are graded with um, 15 millimeters between the length of the wires. So in case when you start digging this and you know more about it, now you already know that the grading before, be, between my sizes is uh, with 15 millimeters between length of the wires. However, this doesn't mean that I have graded every point of my pattern with 1.5 millimeters, okay? I'm just talking about the length of the wires between sizes. Now let's go ahead and talk about the channeling. I have a plush side and another side, let me show you in, de in detail. And this channeling has a hole here, so you will then open the hole and insert your wire on the hole and the wire will be inside there and it will, it will be perfect. And it's very easy to sew this in curve and it has a, some stretch. And so this is, uh, the, the channels are very easy. You can buy them in beige, like I, I'm, I'm going to use today, or you can buy them on, in black or whatever color you want to match your project. I forgot to show you at this point that I'm also going to be using two rings, two small rings, white, uh, to connect my straps to my top on the front. Um, but you can use that or strap adjusters if you have for bras, you can also use the, those. Don't forget that they have to be stainless steel or coated so that they will not get rusty. Time to start uh, cutting our pattern pieces on the foam. So again, don't forget that the stretch of the foam is horizontal. I always use a cutter uh, and not a scissor, but it's up to you. And just be accurate because these pattern pieces all match together if they are cut correctly. So please try and be the most accurate you can when you cut all your pattern pieces uh, for Bikini Pattern Top Marilyn. Cut uh, two upper cups and the same for the lower cups. Something uh, uh, it may happen to you is that once uh, you have the pattern pieces already cut, you don't know what's the inner cup and what's the outer cup. So I often go and grab my pattern piece in paper and match with the cut pattern. So I'm sure I'm doing the right uh, pieces where I want and I sew the correct pieces to each other. Something else I didn't uh, tell you, and this is just my drafted pattern, so it's not the real pattern you will have when you buy the pattern. But when you buy the pattern, you have notches. And the notches are uh, places where uh, uh, you connect two pieces of the pattern. And in the cups, you will have a notch on the foam and also on the main pieces. On the upper cup, you will have a notch um, uh, more or less in the middle of the lower part and on the outer cups you will have a notch in the middle where they connect 
and this is just for you to know where to connect them when you are sewing between them and also when to connect the, the lower cup once it's sewn to the upper cup. I, I hope this made sense but I think you will figure it out once you see me sewing all the different parts on the next few minutes. You sh should mark the notches that are mentioned on the pattern for the foam and also for the main fabric. You should mark them on your fabric and on the foam to help you uh, and guide you when you are sewing. So you can uh, either use a small scissor and do a very small cut on the notch or you can uh, also use a pen uh, washable and uh, mark on the fabric and on the foam. It's up to you. But it's important to mark them so to help you guide you and making sure the pattern pieces are matching on the correct spot. Moving on to cut our main um, fabric and our upper cups and our lower cups. I use the fold because it's easier for me to cut two uh, layers at a time so I'm sure that my pattern cups uh, will be exactly the same. So uh, if you have a print on your pattern, don't forget that you need to decide if you are going to align uh, the direction of that print, but in my case uh, it's fine. Uh, and you if you have stripes or anything, don't forget that if you want to align them between the pieces, this is also the right moment for you to think about it. Don't forget we have seam allowances, so if you want to align stripes for instance, take into consideration that we have seam allowances um, when you align the patterns. But let's go ahead and cut the two lower pieces, to two, the two lower cups and also the uh, upper cup. Uh, so we will have uh, our pattern pieces for the cups ready. It's interesting because the pattern pieces are so small, you can even use scraps that you have that you thought you are never going to use them again. You can actually find small pieces of fabric and uh, you, you can do this with scraps. It's amazing, this pattern <laughs> doesn't spend uh, a lot of main fabric. Time to move on to our next pattern pieces. And the other main fabric that I've chosen, the dotted one, I'm gonna be using it to cut the, um, the wings and also the cradle and the bridge. So let's uh, grab our pieces and uh, start cutting. Two wings, two cradles and one bridge. Don't forget, the greater stretch is horizontal, so uh, make sure you have the grain line vertical on your fabric and uh, opposite, so perpendicular to the greater stretch of your fabric. I also decided to do the straps with the same fabric uh, so I also went ahead and uh, cut it a very long strap it's also mentioned on the pattern we will need two but I, I cut a long one and then if I want I can cut it and I also uh, cut the binding that I told you we are going to use under the arms on both sides I cut one but then I will divide this in two for instance here you can see the, the blue binding that we have here under the arm, this one. Uh, so this is the fabric that I've just cut it. As you can see on the lower I did a zigzag and on the top I used fabric to do this fold and so that's why I have already cut it, this piece of fabric. You can also go ahead and uh, cut a small strap 
uh, as I told you, my main straps are for the top. And then you can also have a thin strap for the back. Cut it completely separately if you want. In my case, I'm not going to do that today, but you will see why when I show you the final result. But it's also an option. Let's cut the bridge on our stabilizer. Uh, as uh, you know, the, we only need one bridge, one center piece that is the bridge. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut one bridge on my stabilizer fabric. Moving on uh, with the power net, don't forget to check the greater stretch horizontally and let's go ahead and cut the two wing pieces and also the two cradles, symmetric of course. We now have here all our pieces. So we have the upper cups, the lower cups with the inner and outer cup, of course. So they will be one piece only. Now the bridge with the stabilizer, the cradles with the power net, the wings with the power net and all our foam pieces. Don't forget, always use your pattern pieces in paper to help you make the exact position and the correct position of your fabrics. Still want to remind you to mark the notches on your fabric. I know I've said this before, but if you are not used to using the notches, you will see that they are useful. So don't forget to mark the notches on your pattern pieces. Also mark the notches on your foam uh, pieces. And that's the, the pieces that we are going to do next. The, the first ones, we are going to sew the foam. So lay on the table your left and your right uh, foam cups, uh, pieces at this stage. Uh, make sure you have the pattern and the pieces correctly. Uh, and that's something that I've, th I've said before, but I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to say it again, maybe for the third time. Make sure you have, you see me here twisting and blah, 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 going around. Yeah, that's it. That's what happens very quickly. So make sure you have your pattern pieces aligned before you go to your sewing machine and then we will be ready to start sewing our uh, foam together. We will be using a zigzag stitch on our straight stitch machine and we will not overlap seams on uh, the foam. And I will explain you slowly when I'm at the machine. So don't worry, it will be easy enough and you will know uh, exactly how to do it. You must choose a stitch size that is wide enough to go from one foam cup to the other when you do the zigzag. So test before you sew your final cup. We will start with the lower cups and we'll feed the cups into the machine moving like so, so it's quite easy. Just, uh, I will do it slowly so you can see, okay? And then we will combine the lower part of the upper cup with our lower cup that it, with, at that point, it will be one piece only. So the first thing I'm going to do is, um, I already have my notch there and on my two pieces. And the first thing I'm going to do is sew these two together and then sew them on this seam here to my top seam of uh, lower seam of my upper cup and I will do this for both foam patterns so let's jump to our sewing machine and start preparing our foam my needle is a 70 uh, jersey needle and uh, this is my regular presser foot and I'm going to set my zigzag stitch to three per three so both of them are set to three and now i just align these two uh, edges together like so and i will start sewing with a zigzag stitch aligning the seam here until the end
and here it is the zigzag uh, from the top to the bottom. Uh, we can cover this with a small uh, piece of fabric. Uh, there are actually uh, fabrics that uh, are already cut and that it's easy to sew here. But usually I leave, I leave it like this. Um, so the, this stitch will be visible. Now that I already have this piece uh, and I don't want to mistake the inside, the inner cup and the outer cup. I'm gonna leave it exactly on this position and I'm gonna bring the upper cup here. And I know that my uh, notch will be here on the middle. And so it will be easy for me to see if this is going okay. So just align the end here, just like we did before. And let's attach the upper cups and the lower cup. So as you can see, we have here, here the shape of our cup. Uh, sometimes I like to go twice on the zigzag because uh, the zigzag doesn't grab the fabric properly like here. So probably what I would do now is I would go again with my zigzag uh, on, the same, on the same seams. Uh, or if you are going to cover this with a tape, uh, you don't need because the tape will be sewn to both cups. So this will be covered and secure. I still wa want to decide what to do, but for now you can see here the cup uh, already uh, prepared. I used my yellow uh, threads on one side and I have the beige uh, on the other. So on this side you probably cannot see the thread, but it's here. So I'm gonna repeat the process for the second cup. A note when we are doing this, we do not pull the, um, the foam. We do not do anything except aligning the two edges together and the machine is pulling and we are just helping uh, the sewing to be uh, accurate on the zigzag and that's it. Well, you know how I am. I always uh, experiment new things on my tutorials. Um, I was telling you that I've seen before uh, people covering the stitches with a tape. Sometimes they, I think they use something uh, that it's called bias tape, I think, uh, that it's non-stretchy. And uh, I have it, but it's uh, thermal adhesive. And I'm not going to apply iron here. I don't want to apply my iron here. And I don't think it will last on the water as a bikini. So what I did is with my power net, um, which is stretchy, as you know. I cut it uh, 8 millimeters, so it's not very, uh, the height is uh, very small. And I'm going to do an attempt of sewing this here to both, uh, to, cover the, um, to cover the stitches. Let me see if I su succeed and I will show you the results so that you decide if you want to do it or not. So this time I'm going to use a straight stitch and I'm going to align my, t my <laughs> tape, which is not a tape, as you know, uh, more or less in the middle. And I'm going to do a stitch on the edge, on one of the edges, from the beginning until the end. And then I'm going to repeat the same on the other edge. So let's see if this turns out okay. I'm not going to tape because I don't think it's interesting, but I will show you the results. Give me two seconds. So I have done one stitch on the edge. Now this is loose and you can see the stitches underneath, but I'm going to flatten this and I'm going to stitch on the other side, on the other edge. Let's see how this goes. So this is the result. I actually like it. I think it's very soft and it looks very nice. Um, but for sure, if I had the correct supply, it would be better. I have to find out what's the name of the supply and try to get it. Uh, of course, I could have done this one also and stick my um, fabric underneath this one. Uh, so the 
the edge of the vertical that I'm going to do now would be underneath here. Um, the only thing I'm not sure is the reverse side, so this side. This is the side where we are going to uh, cover with our main fabric. Um, so this is not going to be visible, but I, if, I don't know, I don't know if uh, the texture here uh, is going to uh, be seen on the other side of the fabric. Maybe I should uh, place a lining and then my fabric, but then I think it's too thick. So you will have foam, lining and fabric and I don't want that. So I'm going to just continue as I did the other top and I'm just going to then cover just like we had uh, planned with um, the main fabric and let's see how this turns in the end. So I'm going to cover the other seam here and uh, we can continue. So this time for the other cup, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing that um, with the lower on the seam of the lower cups and then I will do the other one, okay? So I think the first one should be this one, the vertical that uh, combines the two lower uh, cups and then I will do that. So here is the final result of my second cup. In the middle here you can see that my uh, upper seam is hidden uh, underneath my horizontal uh, that I've placed here and I think it's quite okay. I had a small problem here on when I was sewing but I'm gonna leave it like it is. But the rest I think it's uh, quite nice. So let's go ahead and start preparing our other pieces. Okay, so now we have our foam pieces ready so we can set this aside for now. And we can concentrate on our other pieces. So we have here again the lower cups and upper cup. And again, I'm very careful on keeping them on the correct position because I, I'm afraid of, of twisting them and losing the direction of the pieces. Again, you should have marked your um, notch on the, on the um, uh, pattern pieces. You have the notches, so transfer them to your fabric. And now we just need to do exactly what it, we did for the foam. We need to do it for this fabric. The best for me is to have some place some pins. So I'm going to do first this one right sides facing together and I'm going to pin the beginning the end here and then the middle and I'm going to do exactly the same on this side and once this uh, seam is done I am going to uh, attach these two that they will be transformed in one lower cup. I will attach these two uh, to this seam over here. So just like we did with the foam. So let's go ahead for now and sew this, these two seams together. Uh, I use my straight stitch machine. This is uh, almost non-stretchy area. So you will have no problems on using your straight stitch machine. So do a straight stitch uh, here. The seam is 0 0.6 uh, millimeters. So six millimeters, 0 0.6 centimeters. So don't forget that and just sew along here from the beginning until the end and the same here. And then we will combine this again with the lower part of our upper cup.
since our uh, fabric is stretchy make sure your presser foot is not um, making too much pressure so release a, a bit a little bit the pressure on your press presser foot or it will happen on this on this one the second one it didn't happen but on the first one it happened it pulled slightly uh, my upper fabric uh, down so it's ended up uh, with one millimeter difference here and as I told you in uh, bikinis with this these patterns and with underwire I don't like to miss even one millimeter but it's okay it will not be terrible but it's not how I like to do it. Now, instead of doing the directly the matching of this seam with the lower part of my upper cup, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a cover stitch here on uh, our lower cup, because once it is attached to this one, it is more difficult for me to do the cover stitch. So I will do it before I move to, my, uh, to combine these two pieces together. And to do the cover stitch, we just open the pieces and again, make sure you have your in, um, inner cup aligned properly. And I'm going to place my seam towards my outer cup. So my to my outer cup. And I'm going to apply the top stitch on the side of my outer cup. Okay, right here. So you can do a cover stitch with your uh, cover stitch machine or you can do a zigzag. I'm going to show you what I did on the other experiment test that I made and I actually liked it, but I'm going to show you one second. So what I did here is exactly what I'm telling you. I did a cover stitch with a zigzag and I think it turned out uh, pretty nice. And here I also did a zigzag. So I think it's uh, a good finish if you want to do uh, with your zigzag stitch, okay? So moving on, let's then go to our sewing machine and with the seam towards the outer cup, do a top stitch or a zigzag stitch all along the cup. Sometimes my presser foot um, doesn't sew properly when I have different heights. So I, when I really want to start on the edge of my fabric, I uh, have to place a bit of fabric on uh, the back part of my presser foot. And that's what you see me doing sometimes during this video. And it's just because I need to balance the high of the presser foot along the, the my fabric or if I don't do that I will for sure ruin my work and I will have to start over because my machine simply doesn't sew. Okay so I, I've done it. Don't forget to write down the length and the height of your stitch so that you will make exactly the same cover stitch when you need it all around your piece so don't forget the size of the stitch you have just used well so now we just need to align this with this and this is a interesting part because you have one curve like so and you have that one like so so of course this is not probably something something easy for a beginner but you have to try on other pieces before you do your own bikini top Marilyn but this is something that it's not so hard as it seems I'm gonna show you how to do it so the first thing I'm going to do is align my uh, fabric right sides facing together and I'm going to align this here on the top edge then I'm going to align the bottom here Then you need to align your notch. Sometimes I like, uh, I, I usually pin all my fabrics flat on the table, but for this curve, I don't do it on the table. I actually do it on my hand. 
because I think I feel more uh, comfortable doing so. So find the notch on this piece and match the notch with the middle just like it, it's uh, mentioned on the pattern and start pinning and as I told you so I usually pin this flat on the table but in this case I will pin on my hands. Uh, something that uh, also helps me is that I do not stretch the fabric. I only align it slightly uh, so that the curve is okay and matching but I never stretch neither of uh, the pieces. Now that I have at least five uh, pins in place and I have a curve here, you can place more pins if you feel more safe because you have to make sure that the fabrics will not slide when you are sewing. Now yes, I can put them flat on the table and add some pins to feel more safe when I go to my sewing machine. And you can already go ahead and pin the other cup. So you will be ready to attach these two together. After we do this uh, sewing here, again, the seam is uh, six millimeters, we will uh, do the top stitch also. So I will go ahead and do it instead of coming back here to the table. So I will do the seam and then the top stitch. And the top stitch for these uh, cups, for this area, like you can see here, is uh, making your seam go to the lower cup. So face the lower seam to the lower cup and do your cover stitch. So let's move on and uh, pin our other cup again. I'm doing these uh, videos very slowly and I don't mind if they take a lot of time but I think it's important for you to see everything in detail especially if this is the first time you are doing a bikini with an underwire. So I will take time and I'll, I don't care if the video is too long and I have to divide it in two. Uh, I just would appreciate if you could leave me your feedback on the description, on the comments, uh, on our channel here on the video because I really would like to know what you think if you think this is fine like this or if you like me to do shorter videos or whatever or questions so please go ahead and um, leave your comments here uh, tell me what you liked what you didn't like everything okay and while I was speaking I already pinned my upper cup on this side so Let's uh, go ahead and uh, move to this part. Well, wait, instead of doing that, I'm also going to uh, s uh, attach my bridge. Uh, so I'm gonna do, yeah, grab the st stabilizer, put it on top of your, uh, on top of your main fabric and we will sew six millimeters it's our seam allowance remember six millimeters here securing these two fabrics together so six millimeters there and also here and we'll be back on the table and also cover stitch here and here okay let's go Our cups are sewn and top stitched so they are ready we are going there to them in a minute and uh, on our bridge we have sewn together um, the um, stabilizer with the main fabric and now if you open and with the seam facing your stabilizer you just need to do a top stitch on this side here with the seam facing your stabilizer. So do an under stitch here so that this will be stabilized and you will not see it on the other side. So don't forget, do this. But besides that, since we are going to our sewing machine, let's go ahead and uh, continue preparing our cups. 
So the inside of the cup has uh, the power mesh here that we sewn and this is the outside of the cup. So this will be more or less like so. But uh, our seam here on the top is uh, not uh, seen on the outside. So this means we need to uh, place the fabric right sides facing together with the foam and sew the neckline. And we have uh, applied one centimeter seam allowance here on the top precisely for you to be able to do this. So how do we do it? Grab your cup with the fabric, place your uh, foam on top and pin. So we will pin here. I always pin the edges first. So I will pin this edge here the fabric and the foam and again I will do this on my hands this is a curve line so it's easier for me to do this without stretching the fabric at this point so since we have one centimeter seam allowance uh, prepared on the top of our top so we, sh we should uh, have half a centi six millimeters here on the top coming out because that's our seam allowance and I'm also going to pin there and I'm going to remove this one in the middle and now I need to, to distribute the rest of the fabric along this seam line here so if you need to you will stretch a little bit your fabric and that's okay don't forget that uh, when we do this, we are uh, actually sewing fabrics and materials that uh, have different stretchy um, characteristics. Okay, so this is on the correct spot. And now I'm going to sew, when I sew the, the bridge, the understitch that I told you, I'm also going to go ahead and sew uh, half a centimeter or four millimeters from the edge here I will sew here attaching the main cup to the foam and I will repeat the process for the other cup and so our cups are also ready to sew our bridge is ready to do the understitch I'm gonna set this aside um, the straps I'm gonna find yeah, this is my main strap, the straps for my shoulders. So these two, of course, you can do it just like we do straps for our swimwear, right sides facing together, place an elastic and then with the loop turner, turn it to the right side. So we can also go ahead and sew our strap and we can do a small part here from our cradle and our back, our wing. So let's also go ahead and prepare and connect our wings to our cradles don't forget if you need to check the position and check your pieces to make sure that you have the pieces on the exact position and they are the correct pieces okay and i'm going to show you on one side and then you you will do the other and then we will now we will just sandwich this seam so it's not um, in contact with our body so if we place uh, the power net underneath and then the pattern piece with the main fabric and then the cradle right sides facing together we are only missing this small uh, part of the cradle there I'm just going to roughly pin these three layers and now to make sure that the seam is not facing us what we need, this would be here, right? But we cannot put it here or you would uh, have the seam facing you. We have to match um, the stretch mesh with the, the other stretch mesh, like so. And now, yes, we are ready to align the four layers of fabric and to sew the four layers of fabric. So we have our two main fabrics right sides facing together aligned and then we have the other two again on the other side 
Now, and once we sew this and reverse this like so, you will have uh, no uh, visible seams on this side. Uh, this is also the point where if you want, you can add your boning. I'm not going to because I don't have any, but I only have this metal. Uh, but don't forget to leave one centimeter from the top and uh, one and a half centimeters fr from the bottom because of the seam allowances and then you would have your bone. Now let's just repeat the alignment for these other sides. Pin and we can go ahead and uh, sew uh, here and here. Let's uh, go to our sewing machine. I'm going to do this with the overlock and the swimwear elastic, the rubber elastic, eight millimeters wide. Straight stitch, apply the bone if you want here. Under stitch with the seam towards the stabilizer. Straight stitch half a centimeter from the edge here, from one edge to the other on both cups and we'll be back on the table. So I started with the cover stitch, the under stitch of my bridge and then I sewed the wings to the cradles and as soon as they were ready I flattened the seam and I already did the cover stitch with a zigzag on that seam so it's the wing with the cradle is all ready. As you can see here the result is pretty nice and I think the finish is looking good. I'm now uh, sewing the upper cup seam, the one with one centimeter. So I'm sewing half a centimeter from the edge um, and connecting the foam to the main piece. We can see here in detail how this seam looks right now, but we are just uh, starting here, we are going to trim all this, so don't worry, it looks uh, bulky, but it's not going to end up being bulky. Repeat the process for the other cup. I remember I have this clear elastic. This is not very stretchy and actually we should not use this uh, as an elastic ever uh, for swimwear. I know that there are people who do that, but I never do that. But I think this would be good to cover the seams. Remember we talked about the seams uh, on the cup. I think this would be also a nice option to cover the seams. So maybe next time I will try uh, and cover them with this. So now we have here our cradle with our wing. And I'm going to grab my bridge and we want to combine this piece with this one. And uh, we want these two facing together, so that's easy. We just do like so, aligning them. And then we have the bridge to align the, the stabilizer also here. But then, just like we did when we combined the wing with the cradle, we need the stretch to be on this side. So I will grab these three fabrics the two main ones and the stabilizer and I'm gonna grab this one and put it on top on this side so I'm gonna fold this here and I'm gonna do like so if you want repeat uh, the video slowly so that you can uh, do exactly the same that I'm doing but it's the same thought that we uh, had to use to combine the cradle with uh, the wing okay so now we have uh, the, the power net, we have the stabilizer and we have our two fabrics uh, right sides facing together. So we will sew over the four layers of fabric. Once we have this side ready, we can go ahead and do exactly the same for the other sides. And this is it for today. If you want to see the next video, just click on the screen and see you soon. Bye.